Fine, OK. So let's do this. What would this be equal to using this term? What would they be equal to? Just using this. Yep. Good, exactly, because n, remember, is a half. Good. So half and r is equal to x. So yeah, you could write it as half x or x over 2. That's fine. What about this term? OK, good. So I'll do it first of all just by sticking the numbers in, just so we can see where it comes from. So you get half times by a half minus 1, which is negative 1 half, divided by 2 factorial, which is just 2, uh, times by r, which is x, to the power of 2. OK, um, what's the next term? So we'll do the first four terms. So you're going to get half times by half minus 1, or negative 1 half, times by half minus 2, or negative 3 over 2, divided by 3 factorial. What's 3 factorial again? It's 6, isn't it? Yep. And then that's x to the power of 3. Okay. And I could carry on going like this. Now here's my question. With this one, where we had an integer power, are you happy that we had a finite number of terms in our series? Okay, so in other words, it stopped at some point. So here we had to the power of 4, and we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms in my series. Okay? With this, when we're raising our binomial to a non-integer power, or a negative power in fact, were you happy that this thing is going to carry on going forever and ever and ever? Are you happy with that? Because if you try it, if you try applying this to this, if you try applying this to this, eventually you're just going to get terms which drop out to be 0. Because you're going to have 4 times by 3 times by 2 times by 1. Think about what's happening here. And then eventually you're going to be timesing by 0. Yeah? So there's going to be something in there. So if it was like 4 times by 3 times by 2, then the next one would be times by 1. Then the next one would be times by 0. And all of the terms after this will always have a times by 0 in, which means that they become 0. Yeah? So therefore, they stop. They're finite. Does that make sense? Do you see that? So I mean, try this with this. So try this formula on here. Okay. Obviously, you'd have to do a bit of rearranging to get a 1 here. Okay. But if you try this on here, I can promise you, because this is an integer power, effectively, because all of these coefficients, I mean, you can see it here with this numerator. Effectively, you're just taking away 1 all the time. So if you start at 4, then effectively, you will get to a term where you are taking away 4 from this power, which becomes 4 minus 4, which makes 0. Okay? So that is why terms end up dropping out over here. And eventually, all of the terms after that point will always have a 0 in, because they'll always have 4 minus 4 in. Hence, you will just end up with a finite sequence, or sorry, finite series like this. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah? Um, good. Whereas with things like this, like, you're never going to get a half minus a half. Because if you notice, you're always taking away an integer each time. So with every single term, you're always taking away an integer from that power. Does that make sense? So with something like this, if I take n to be a half, okay, this one is just a half. This one is a half times by a half minus 1. This one's a half times by a half minus 1 times a half minus 2. This one would be a half times a half minus 1 times a half minus 2 times a half minus 3. You're never going to get a term which has a half take away half because you're always taking away an integer number from that power okay, with, every t with every term in the series. Yeah? So because you're never going to get a half times a half, you're never going to get a term which comes out as 0. So therefore, this thing is going to carry on going forever and ever and ever. Okay? So basically, if this power is a fraction, or are you happy if this fraction is a negative number? Because you're always taking something away. If you start to say negative 1, OK? Yeah, if you take away negative 1, and you take away 1 from negative 1, you get negative 2. And if you take away 2 from negative 1, you get negative 3. And if you take away 3 from negative 1, you get negative 4, and so on. So in other words, by taking numbers away from a negative, it will just become more negative. It's never going to be 0. Is that okay? So the condition is that if our power 
So if n, I'll write it over here, if our power is a, a fraction like this, okay, so a half, a third, a quarter, two fifths, etc., 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 or if our power is negative, so a negative integer, then we know that our series will be infinite. In other words, it's never, ever going to stop. Is that all right? OK, so then our series is infinite. OK, whereas with this example up here, because this power was an integer, it was a whole number and it was positive, then we know that effectively we will come up with a term that just goes to zero. In fact, every term after that point will also have zero in because we'll have a four minus four at some point. OK, so therefore this series is finite. Is that OK? The difference between a finite series and an infinite series. So finite means it stops. There's a definite number of terms. Infinite means it carries on going forever and ever and ever. Yeah. OK, fine. Um, just tidy this up for me. So if we tidy this up, we get 1 plus, well, that's just a half times x, so you could write it as x over 2. I'll just leave it as a half x, that's fine. Okay. Then you have a half times by negative a half divided by 2. What's that? Sorry? So a half times negative a half. So not half minus a half, half times negative a half. That's negative 1 quarter. Divide that by 2. Good. Negative 1 eighth times by x to the power of 2. Perfect. OK, half times negative a half times negative 3 over 2. So that's going to be positive, right? So it's going to be positive 3 over 8 on the numerator. Then you're going to divide that by 6. Over 48. Yeah, good. Because it's just effectively dividing that by 6. OK, and then you've got x to the power of 3 and so on. OK. So you might have, for example, a situation which says, right, take this, 1 plus x to the power of a half, OK, um, and find the first four terms, or first, yeah, four, first four terms of this expansion. You would end up with something like this. Is that OK? Yeah, you end up with something like this. Now, here's my question. What I'm literally doing here, I mean, raising something to the power of a half, what does that actually mean? So how else could I write that? How else could I write raising something to the power of a half? Square rooting, right? If I take 1 plus x and I raise it to the power of a half, that is the same as taking the square root of 1 plus x. Is that OK? Yeah? So x is just some number. It's just some random number that if I stick in there, OK? So what I could do, for example, is I could take the square root of 1.5. So I could ask now the question, what is the square root of 1.5? Well, now I know. I have a way of working this out. Like, clearly, the square root of 1.5 is tricky to do. Like, if I asked you what's the square root of 1.5, Sanjay, what would you say? He'd say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> right? Not without a calculator, at least. OK. Well, now you do know. Like, you can get it to any degree of accuracy. So let's try this out. Because 1.5, I can write it as 1 plus something. You're happy it's 1 plus a half. OK. So this is the same as the square root of 1 plus 1 half. Okay? So in other words, what I'm saying here is that if I compare this to this, I'm just basically saying that x is equal to a half. Okay? Which means, because 1 plus x to the power of a half is equal to this, if I just stick x equals a half into this series, then I will be able to get this to a reasonable degree of accuracy. So let's try this out. Okay, 1 plus x is equal, one, a square root of 1 plus x is equal to this. If I'm saying that x is equal to 1 half, let's stick it into this series and see what happens. So we should get 1 plus a half times x, which is a half, remember. So a half times a half, OK? Minus 1 eighth times by x squared, so times by a half squared, OK? Minus 3 40 eighths times by x cubed, so x is equal to a half, so you get half cubed, and so on like this. And obviously, if I had more terms, if I bothered to put more terms in, then I'd have this to a greater degree of accuracy. 
So let's try this out without a calculator then. Okay, see if we can squeeze it in. So we've got one. We can then add on a half times a half. Half times a half is a quarter, right? And then we're going to add, take away an eighth times a half squared. Well, are you happy? A half squared is just equal to a quarter. And then I'm timesing that by an eighth. So therefore, I should get 1 over, excellent, 1 32th. OK? And then minus, so then I have minus uh, 3 48ths. In fact, have I made a mistake there? Yeah, this thing here should be positive, shouldn't it? OK. This thing here should be positive, because of course, you can have negative times a negative. So yeah, this should be plus 348, so if I add that on. Um, a half cubed is equal to 1 eighth, and then I'm timesing that by 348. I mean, it's just fractions, right? What's 8 times 48? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, so you call that 50, let's say. Uh, 50 times 8 is equal to 400, isn't it? And then I've got to take away 2 times 8. So 2 times 8 is 16. So that's going to be 384. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and then so on like that. And obviously, these are just fractions. I can add fractions together. I can see what they come out as. Is that OK? Yeah? So this is how I could begin to work out what the square root of 1.5 is without a calculator. It's just binomial series. Is that all right? Yeah. In fact, it's an interesting question. When you type the square root of 1.5 into your calculator, I wouldn't mind guessing that this is what your calculator is doing. Okay? Because you clearly the square root of 1.5 is absurd. It's irrational. It carries on going forever and ever and ever. Well, this series carries on going forever and ever and ever. I reckon your calculator is just using a binomial series, like it's programmed to use a binomial series, to work out the square root of 1.5. And obviously your calculator can do this calculation like that.